Hello, everybody, and welcome. So glad to have everybody here for our very first poetry and music release party celebration. I am David Bradley. I'm the producing director of arts and learning for World Cafe Live. And we are so thrilled to have you here for Mighty Songs of the Moment. Thank you so much for being here with us. Tonight is a celebration of new work, of new artists, and new collaboration and partnership. And it's a collaboration and partnership with great young artists, teaching artists, and two organizations that have a lot of things in common. At World Cafe Live, we've long admired the great work of mighty writers whose as mission is as simple as it is powerful. They say, we teach kids to write. Whether online or in person, we take students through every genre of writing, but always with the same goal to inspire kids to think clearly and write with clarity. And our mission at World Cafe Live is to open doors to shared experiences that create connections and inspire learning and celebrate who we all are. Writing, connections, celebration. That's why Mighty Writers and World Cafe Live got together this spring. That's what we get to share. Tonight, you'll hear original poems by student writers from across Philadelphia and Camden. You'll hear new songs inspired by those poems done in partnership with World Cafe Live teaching artist Ami Yaris. You'll see, get to have a special live appearance by one of our favorite teaching artists, Bethlehem Robertson. This is a celebration of what's possible in difficult times. Another great young writer a long time ago, Anne Frank, wrote in her famous diary that somebody from the Dutch government, she heard on the radio say, history cannot be written on the basis of official documents alone. If our descendants are under, to understand what we have as a nation have endured during these years, we need simple everyday pieces. And one of the poets who were part of this project, Calvin Turner said, soon the cold will end and communities will be born again. That's from his poem. So tonight we're gonna celebrate how art helps us look differently at the everyday pieces of our lives. We celebrate one way communities can be born again, by writing, by collaborating, by helping us look at ourselves in new ways. And we celebrate the words of these artists and how words inspire new ways to see the world and to create. Think of the songs you're gonna hear as simple snapshots and sound from an unprecedented spring and summer, this spring and summer of 2020. You'll hear lyrics about the beauty of the season, people who inspire us, isolation and hope. We'll hear Ami singing in the studio, the student writers singing on their phones. The, the writers came to this as writers, not always as musicians, but they grew into that, or some were musicians. And we can hear them almost closing the distance, this social distance we felt, word by word, note by note, voice by mighty voice. And you're gonna get a chance to ask them questions. We'll ask you to use the Q&A, not the chat box, and we'll get to your questions throughout and then at the end. But right now, I want to bring on our panelists, and I'm going to ask them uh, to uh, bring on their video and unmute themselves as we go. And I'm going to introduce them one by one. So we have Zina Ahmed, who's a rising 10th grader from the Foundation Charter High School. Hi, Zina. Hi, everyone. Annabelle Kuster, a rising 5th grader at Penn Alexander School. Hello. We've got Layla Butts who is going to go into seventh grade at Juilliard Masterman School. Hello. We've got, we've got Victoria Sindlinger, a homeschooler, heading into 11th grade. Hi, everyone. We have Amani Ayala, who is another homeschooler. She's heading into fourth grade. Hello. We've got Alea Dunlap. Hi. She's at Camden Prep, and she's heading into ninth grade. And Oyeen Moore Scott, she just finished up eighth grade at Hill Friedman World Academy and is heading into ninth grade at Girls High. Um, I don't think I forgot anybody of our poets. Did I forget anybody of our poets? Don't, don't think so. Um, and Annabelle, are you in? Hmm, we lost Annabelle. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get Annabelle back. Something happened where she bounced into attendee land and not participant land, but we'll get her back in a minute. Um, I'm going to bring on Ami Yaris, 
the great songwriting collaborator who worked with us on this and has been part of World Cafe Live's education programs for five years now. And our special guest star, Bethlehem Robertson, who started working with us this year. Hi, how so are here's you? the gallery of artists that we get to enjoy. We're gonna start by teasing it with a song. You're gonna hear about a minute of a song, the song Mother, that was created from poems by Amani, Alea, and Oyin, along with Ami. And it's Oyin and Ami doing the music and the, the singing on this. We're gonna hear about a minute of it, and then at the end, you're gonna hear more. But I'm gonna ask everybody to shut off their video, and uh, our partner Blair in the unseen musical magical world is gonna roll with one of the songs and show us the lyrics a bit so you can follow along with Mother. My guide, my protector, my love, so me through thick and thin. Unbreakable bonds we create. Think of a many names that you may know. Mommy, mom, mom. That was just a taste of mother. You'll get to hear how that came to be uh, and um, hear the whole song in a live rendition. Um, and we'll share at the end of this the link where you can go find all of this great music and listen more. But we're gonna move on to um, the first full song we're gonna hear. And I'm gonna bring in uh, poet Zina Ahmed, um, who, uh, Zina, why don't you uh, join us here? and um, bring back Ami for a second. Um, the process was Mighty Writers invited students from across the region to submit poetry to a poetry contest every week. And there were winners chosen, but there were so many more poems that were worthy. And Ami looked through those and found other great poems. The prompt for this poem was community. And so Zena and Annabelle and then another poet, Calvin Turner, who couldn't be with us, wrote poems about community, and then they got together with Ami and turned them into a song. So we're going to let Zena share her poem first that inspired the song that you'll hear soon, Share Love, Strength, and One Core. Hi, everyone. I'm Zena, and I'm going to be reading my poem, Community. I see people walk around every day, people who seem to be alike but different. I see a community, people who unite. That's what we call unity. If we don't know each other, why does it seem like we do? Why does it seem like the woman standing over there was walking besides me just the day before? I can't explain why these feelings are here, but I can tell you that in fact, we are the same. You may have not seen the person a day in your life, but you think you know them. We all breathe the same air, watch the same shows, feel the same water droplets falling from the sky. Some listen to the same music, some work in the same fields, and some may even think of the same things. Just because we don't look alike doesn't mean we aren't. You see, we all take part in the area we live in. Every person plays a role. Those people, they leave their houses to provide for their families. Don't you? Don't your parents? They have feelings, responsibilities, and priorities and so do you. That's the person you saw at your church, mosque, or synagogue. Can you spot the similarity? You both believe in the same thing. You're part of what we call a community, a group of people diverse in many ways, but who have many things in common.
Thank you so much, Zena. I'm giving you the, uh, the, the, the virtual hand clap. We might have had a little bit of connecting trouble with um, Annabelle, but I'm hoping that if Annabelle, you're not back in as a panelist, if you can unmute yourself. Um, oh, she's here. So then come on in, Annabelle. Annabelle Cooster. Come on in, and uh, Annabelle is going to share her poem that uh, just un um, just unblock your video or your mute, Annabelle, so that you can come in. Oh, Annabelle is saying she's an attendee, which which shifted immediately. Um, Blair, I'm going to ask you if you can unmute Annabelle as an attendee so that Annabelle can read her poem. We might not be able to see her, but we can hear her. And Blair, if you're able to do that, we should be able I to- I think I'm able to, um, Annabelle, it says you'll be rejoining as a panelist. Great. Why don't we do this, Blair? As we wait to get Annabelle back in as a panelist, we'll split this. Let's go to the song. So you've heard one poem, you've heard the notion of breathing the same air and listening to the same songs. We're going to now hear the song, Share Love, Strength in One Core, written by Zena and Annabelle and Ami. Uh, and they all join Ami on the vocal. Annabelle Kuster, as I live and breathe. Folks, in case you were wondering, there is no tape. This is live. And we're rolling with all of the great glitches of Zoom. But Annabelle, you know, who's going into fifth grade, is smarter at it than me, so she solved it. Annabelle, read your poem for us. Communities. A community is a big family with many different cultures, ages, religions, and a lot of different backgrounds. People in every community differ, but everyone in the community share love, strength, and one core. My community is a quiet one, but before COVID-19, it would be loud, loud enough to notice, but not enough to be annoyed. But really, it depends on who you are. My community is quiet, sad, but also very peaceful. Quietness with no cars passing, nor people walking and talking right by my front door. Sadness, alone in my house with nothing to do. No friends to hang out with, no more play dates. That's how my community is now. That is powerful, Annabelle. Thank you very much for sharing and sharing so honestly. So let's now see what Ami and Zena and Annabelle put together from what the, two, the three of them plus Calvin Turner wrote. Let's listen to Share Love, Strength, and One Core. We're all united. We may have our differences, but we're all one. We all breathe the same air, watch the same shows, feel the same water falling from the sky, and listen to the same music, work the same fields. Some even may think of the same things people leave their houses provide for the families the feelings that they have of things to be done weighs on the shoulders the need for assurance that things are complete you just gotta remember Share love, share love, strength, and one core. Share love, share love, strength, and one core. Share love, share love, strength, and one core. Share love, strength, and one core. We walk alone outdoors. Out into the cold See emptiness and boundless With no warmth to behold 
little shimmering glimpses of warmth can be found. Far away laughter echoing, we are not alone. They still stay away, stay cold to stay safe. Through now, not now, not much warmth, but warm hearts, warm minds. And smiles still stand at least six feet apart. You just gotta remember. Share love, share love, strength, and one core. Share love, share love, strength, and one core. Share love, share love, strength, one core. Share love, strength, and one core. Together again. Soon with friends. Soon together again. Community will rise again. Soon together again. Soon with friends. Soon together again. Community. Share love, strength, and one core. Share love, share love, strength, and one core. Share love, share love, strength, one core. Share love, strength, and one core. Share love, strength, and one core. Thank you so much for that great song, Zena and Annabelle and Ami. I'm going to ask Zena and Annabelle, Ami to all uh, come back on the screen here. Uh, and uh, Zena and Annabelle, I'd love each of you to just share just a tiny bit. You can unmute yourselves. And can you tell us how you got the idea for your poem? What did you, what did you want to say? Where did the idea come from? Um, so my idea for my poem is to just let people know that we're all more alike than we think. So you may like you may be like, oh, I don't know this person, so that doesn't mean that we're similar in any way. But in reality, we all have some similarities that draw us together and make us one. Um, I agree with Zena. I got my idea for my poem. There are a lot of people in my community that I probably don't know, but I still know that we still have some similarities, even though we might not know each other that well, and we're still together as a community. I'm muted. Annabelle, you wrote pretty bravely about sadness and being alone after COVID. Um, what made you want to write about that, or, or, or how, did it, did, how did it feel to write that? Did that help you deal with the sadness and the aloneness, I wonder? Um, it didn't really help, but it... That's a very honest answer. Sadness and aloneness are big. Writing might help, but it might not. Why was it important for you to talk about it? Well, I feel like a lot of people could connect to what I was writing. And That's, so, keep going. I thought that I should put it in my poem. That's great. I'm just going to repeat that. A lot of people could connect to what I was writing, so I should put it in my poem. And that's that idea of like, this is the record of how we're all feeling. So among the three of you, 
Um, what was it like? You had three poems. You had Calvin's poem too. You had three poems. What was it like to try to take poems that you each wrote individually and turn it into a song? How did you get started or what idea worked or what was the process? Um, and how did it make you feel differently about your poem or, or about the song you made? Go ahead, Annabelle. It looks like you're pushing to unmute. Um, I just want to say that I never expected that poem to become a song to, or to become part of a song. And so the first time when I opened my Gmail account and I saw the message, I was like, oh my God. I can't believe this because I never expected it. How did how did you guys start to put the poems together into one song? Zena, what can you share about the process or or what you what you saw as a possibility for this new thing? Um so basically we our poems are about community and um every single poem has something that kind of like drew them all together so like what we were talking about was very similar and to make the song we just chose parts of the poems that stood out the most that we feel like the audience would be able to, to connect with and would enjoy hearing it in a song so that's just how we kind of got the idea to put those certain pieces from our poems into our song yeah Ami, anything you want to add to that or what maybe what you learned about either songwriting or just about how to think about the world. And Blair, while Ami's talking, can you make me the host? Cause I want to share something, uh, a, a bit of visual of this. So connecting to what, what Zena just said, um, we picked out these choice, these choice words and phrases from the songs. And then there's like a magic in songwriting that takes place. And, you know, we met twice for about over an hour, both times and talking back and forth and converse, like conversing and like trying to, I don't know if this is a word, but like we tried to musify the words and like, how could we, how could we draw out uh, music from, from the words that what was, what was hidden between, between the syllables there and the consonants and vowels, what, what kind of music was waiting to creep out. And so Zena and Animal have a very, very brave, to, to see their songs and Calvin's, I mean, their poetry and Calvin's poetry to create something new. And I, I shared this like math equation that I learned in, in college that um, when sometimes you combine something together that it doesn't always equal uh, what you think. So one plus one doesn't equal two when you're doing work like this, one plus one equals three. And so in this, in this song's case, it was one plus one plus one equals four, because all those three poems stood together by themselves. But when they combined together, it was kind of like Voltron. And we created this like, you know, beautiful uh, piece of music that, that brought their ideas to, from words to sound. Thank you. That's a, I, I love that idea of, um, of how, you can, uh, how, how you can make more things out of, uh, out of, make one big thing out of a bunch of different participants. That's a, that's a great way of thinking about it. In a way, you made a community. I mean, you took poems that were about community and you made a kind of a musical community. Um, we, we'll, we'll screen share in a minute what your process looks like, but I'd actually like to bring in um, uh, our next group of poets. I'd like to bring in Layla and Victoria and Annabelle and uh, Zena. Thank you very much, and we'll bring you back in a minute. Um, and folks who are listening along, I would just invite you to share any uh, questions in the Q&A and we can read them out uh, as we go along. But um, uh, Layla and Victoria, why don't you come in now? Um, and you guys uh, had a whole different prompt for your poem, uh, can you say what the prompt was, uh, Victoria? What was the, what what was the? They had community. What did you have? Um, I'm afraid I actually don't remember what the prompt was. It was so long ago. Uh, 
Layla, do you remember? I don't think there was a prompt. There wasn't a prompt, so it was just open-ended. Um, all right, that's excellent. So what made you, uh, what made you want to write what you wrote? You each kind of wrote about spring and the feeling of, of, of being outside. Layla, what, what made you want to write what you wrote? I really wanted to connect with my surroundings and what I see every day. And how about you, Victoria? Um, yeah, pretty similar to what Layla said, which is probably why our poems work well together. Um, yeah, I'm, I've always been a nature lover. Um, and there was this one beautiful spring day when I was just, you know, going about my everyday activities, walking the dog, you know, little errands like that. And I just noticed how beautiful the city was in springtime. Um, all the flowers were blooming and the temperature was just gorgeous. There were birds everywhere. Did and you, yeah, it's all like I need to capture in, in the poem. I don't know if either of you had this experience, any of you. The, uh, the spring this year felt particularly amazing. And maybe it's because we were being so teased by the fact that we were all stuck at home. Did that enter into your mind? Like, were you noticing this spring, either of you, do you think? Because yeah. of, yeah, talk about that, Layla. I really got to notice more things about my surroundings because I was out there more. How about you, Victoria? Yeah, I, I definitely think this spring was gorgeous, perhaps particularly so. And I think it really gave me a chance to realize how much beauty we have right here at home, um, that you don't have to travel to the mountains um, or to some tropical getaway to see natural beauty we have it right here in Philadelphia. And that was particularly useful as we were adjusting to the, the real challenges and, and, and scary stuff of this pandemic. And one of the reasons we did this project was we wanted to think about, well, how in this time does writing help us think about the world in a new way? So why don't you take us into those springs? Let's start with you, Victoria. Why don't you share your poem and then we'll bring Layla on to share hers and then we'll hear the, the gorgeous song that you made from this. Um, this is to me a little bit of an antidote to the pandemic. So uh, we'll start with you, Victoria. All right. My poem is titled, Springtime Bliss in Philadelphia Streets. Look at the cherry tree on your street. Do you see its blossoms, pale and sweet? The bumblebees come, the bumblebees go, pollinating the blooms as they do so. If the petals have fallen off your tree, look, observe its leaves, a pretty light green. Beyond the tree, looking way up high, lovely clouds float in the light blue sky. Oh, the warm breeze that flies by you, it feels so good, so free and true. Suddenly, you see an osprey high in the air, perhaps returning home right then and there. Dandelions, violets, forsythias bloom. Threads of color on nature's loom. Even invasives are beautiful today. On the starling's back, the sunbeams play. Hear the robins and cardinals sing. Hear their lovely melodies ring. Looking at all this, do you not feel the joy of a mountain spring right now, right here? Fantastic, fantastic. And, and Layla, let's bring you on for your take on the spring. Okay. My poem is called Happiness All Around Me. I sense happiness all around me. It is like a bright canary yellow. I see it in my friends and family. I feel it in the warmth of my skin. I smell it in the home garden by the window. I taste it in the ice cream overdose with sprinkles. I hear in that laughter of my lo loved ones. When I am happy, I am free. Now, Blair, why don't you uh, let us hear the song, Springtime Bliss All Around Me, that came from these two poems and that include Layla and Victoria and Ami in the song. Look at the 
cherry tree on your sleeve. Do you see the blossoms pale and sweet? The bumblebees come, the bumblebees go, feeding the blossoms as they do so. Thank you, thank you, fabulous. Uh, let's bring back the writers, Ami and Victoria and Leila. You can rejoin us. Um, what's it like hearing that? You wrote a poem, you wrote a poem alone in your room. You sent it out somewhere. Now you're listening to a song. Can either of you describe what it's like and, and how it, how it both affirms and changes what the poem was? It's really amazing um, getting to hear the song. Um, I've heard it several times already and it's just, it feels so new each time and so wonderful. Um, I think the thing that's so incredible to me is that I have literally never met the people I've worked with in person. Um, and yet I feel so very connected to them and um, when I see their face, it makes me happy. Um, like they're friends to me, even though we've never met in person. Um, I think that's the power of music and art in general, the power to connect. 
Layla, how about you? What's it like to hear? And I'm just amazed how we were able to take two poems and make it into such a beautiful song. Where did the melody come from? How did you get an idea for what those words would sound like? Um, I don't feel like we had a particular structure for that, but um, we all like were in a Zoom meeting with me one day, <laughs> and um, just um, well, we started with what um, what sort of like baseline beat and um, guitar pattern we wanted, and uh, we played with a few different ones, and you know, general and uh, finally settled on one. Um, and um, sometimes um, we'd sing a couple of different things to test out how things would sound. Um, yeah, it was definitely new territory for me, but I'm glad I did it. It was really fun. Um, I wanna just ask you both one more question, which is um, why does writing matter to you? What do, you, what, do you, what do you get from it and what do you get from hearing other people's writing? And Ami, you, you're a writer too. Not as wise as these two, but you know, you're, uh, but why does writing matter to you? Why do you do it? How does it help us know the world? Um, I guess I can start. Um, well, I think poetry especially is important to me because, um, I sort of like to describe it as um, like painting a picture with words. Um, and I'm not a great artist, so I'm glad that there's a way that I can still, you know, like project that image um, for other people. And it can help me work through emotions sometimes. And I feel like there's a lot of things in life that I wish I could capture. And I try to do that with my poems. Um, and something that I kind of want to share about this one, um, this poem that I wrote, is that um, it was sort of inspired by um, a song I had been working on in my voice lesson at the time, um, which is a classical song. Um, it's in German, it's titled Die Landlust, and it was written by Haydn. Um, and it's basically about the same thing, just the beauty of nature and how, um, how it brings us peace. And I think it's kind of cool to see how, um, you know, we both have these pieces that are so very similar, and yet, you know, they're in different languages separated by hundreds of years. It, it's very moving to hear you say that because it lines up with what you said about not having met in person your collaborators. You hadn't met Haydn either. Um, <laughs> and uh, that, but somehow through music, that's the power of connection, particularly now. I mean, I think this project is helping us understand how do we live in a tough time and what is possible. Layla, why does writing matter to you? For me, writing is an outlet to show my emotions and opinions. Do you, do you write all the time? No. When do you write? When, are you, when do you find that you, you do write? When... Sometimes I'm bored. <laughs> um, is there a time of day that you're writing time? In the middle of the day. Oh, all right, that's good. Uh, how about you, Ami? Why does writing matter to you? Well, the, 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 our two writers just said so much. There's, there's not much I can add to that. Um, I, I can just say is that, you know, it's a way of um, bringing the, the internal external. And sometimes for me, I, I need to see what I'm thinking and feeling written in front of me. In addition to that, that there's also something very therapeutic for it to be able to sing and then feel those words vibrate and my body literally not only be intellectually moved, but physically moved. And then, you know, that magic thing that takes place when you hear music and words together, like an almost spiritual existential experience that takes place. And then the pleasure of moments like this of being able to share that, that, that connection with people. And then they, they respond how, how they feel to what they've heard. And there's this whole, this whole um, catalytic response that takes place. And that's why I write. I, it just, it brings me together closer to people, closer to myself. You know, this whole project has been supported by the Pennsylvania Humanities Council, who really wisely stepped up and said, in this moment, let's see what can, we can make. And, you know, the humanities get behind art, but they also want us to understand why art matters. And listening to the three of you, I think one of the things that we're starting to understand is things start inside us 
and then we want to share and then that helps us not just know our world but know other people's world and so now we got these centuries from Haydn to well to our next song and set of poems mother which come from a very different musical tradition than Haydn but again is all about how do we start to get to know the world and uh just a shout out to uh Laurie Zyrer and uh, Don Frisbee Byers from the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. I think at least one of them are with us tonight. But you helping young people show us how we know the world and how the humanities help us see the world. Big props to you. And thank you, Victoria and Layla. And let's bring on our next set of poets. Oyin, Moore Scott, Alea Dunlap, and Amani Ayala for our final set of poems and songs. Um, uh, and uh, I think we might just start with who can tell us what the prompt was for this poem? Oyin, what? Well, you saw your hand. Um. Okay. So, can you guys hear me? Mm hmm Okay. So the prompt was to write about someone that inspired you. Is there anything you want to add to that, Alea or Amani, in addition to someone who inspired to you? In you? Alea, Alea, anything? So who who did you choose, Alea? Um, I chose my mother because she's somebody who I know is always going to be there for me, and someone that I know that can always be there. And uh, Imani, why did you, why did you, who did you choose and why did you choose who you chose? I chose my mom because she was, I chose my mom because she wasn't really feeling that good. So I decided to make her a poem. So that's why. You know, I love what you just said. I decided to make her a poem. Not write her a poem, like you made something in the world. You know, sometimes we think poems are flat and they're tucked away, but you kind of gave her something. And Wayne, why did you choose who you chose? Um, I chose my mother because my mother um, is a big inspiration in my life and has been for like, my whole life. So um, she was the first person that came to mind when they said to write about someone that inspired you. Very moving. Um, let's hear each of these poems. Uh, why don't we start with you, Imani, and we'll all duck away while Imani shares her poem. Okay. This poem is about my mom. The title is My Mom. She's bold and beautiful. She's kind and helpful. She's thoughtful and thankful. She's funny and sweet. She's mad and grumpy sometimes, but the next day we're well, all right. She's my one and only mom. Thank you, Imani. Oyin, why don't you join in? Okay. Um, my poem is called My Protector. My guide, my protector. What's the name you ask? The name's mom, madre. We all either have one or had one. They go by many names that you may know, like mommy, mama, mom, or madre, etc. And so, the reason we are here is because of our guides and protectors. My protector has been there for me through thick and thin. My protector is that encouraging little voice within saying, you got this, I'm here. Me madre cares for me with no complain, but you, yours does the same, so try not to be afraid. Thank you. And then our last one, which is um, Alea. Um, my poem is called Word to My Mother. Words to my mother. I love her. From her curls to her heart, the one soul I wish could never depart, she's my mother. No one else goes above her. The first hand I've ever held, my first love, my true soulmate, she's my mother. My first teacher, my biggest fan in the bleachers, the hand I hold when I'm falling, the hug that keeps me together. So word to my mother. I love her. 
my best friend, my rider to the end, my smile when I'm most unhappy. She always listens when I get a bit chatty because she's my mother. She holds more value than your gold and she's tougher than your diamond. She's priceless. Mothers are one of a kind and luckily I chose this one to be mine. So word to my mother. I love her. <laughs> Am I hearing a mother react there in the background? I think that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, why don't you all come back and uh, Blair, I'm hoping that you uh, saw the link that I, I sent you in the chat because I would love to sort of let us see the visual a little bit of the process uh, and the way that Ami and the writers put these together. Um, uh, the, the most recent link that I sent you. Oyin and uh, Imani, come on back. Actually, I sent you a next one, Blair. The most recent one. I'm sorry, I'm messing you up. But like I said, this is live and we're improvising. Um, but while we're, uh, while we're getting that up, uh, I did have a question for you, Oyin, which is, why is it important for people to pay attention to the voices of young people? Why does the writing of young people matter? Um. Well, to me, I feel as though, even though we are like young and, you know, youth, I feel as though we also have some important messages that we need, that we feel as though should get out, that other people should hear and that are important as well and could mean a lot and can make you see things in a different perspective, seeing as though we are younger and are going through different things. So, going through different things. I think that's a, it's a theme here about how do we connect. And I've got my experiences and I've got my own relationships with my mother and history with my mother, but you have, we all, I love that line, we all have one or had one. That's, that's huge. Um, uh, let's look for a second. Blair's gonna share a screen and we're gonna just get a chance to see just a tiny bit of the process. Sometimes I like just showing how the, the gorgeous sausage gets made. And I, I think, Blair, and you can probably drag your cursor to show some of these bolded words that are in the screen. Word to my mother, I love her, my best friend, my rider to the end. Ami and Oyin, Alea, and uh, uh, Imani, come on back with us um, if you're not there. Um, and uh, talk to us about what this what these bolded words mean and how you use that process to put together the song. This is one of the hardest things when it comes to working with, with these poets is that you got to edit sometimes. And I wish I could have written with them, a, we could have written a seven minute song to include all the lyrics because there's some lines in there that are real fire, you know, that really get you. Um, and so when we first started sitting down, I, you know, I looked at all the poetry and I, I, I was honest. I was like, these are lines that get me as a writer. You know, these are lines that really jump at me. Sometimes uh, there's words that just pop. And this was, uh, in the case, a lot of these sentences that are highlighted here was, was stuff that popped, you know? You know, especially that the mommy, mama, madre line that ended up becoming the chorus. And uh, I, I, in, the, in um, the other poem, my writer to the end, my best friend, were like inspirational just to like, to get us to the place where we could start singing, you know? And so every line there was kind of like, a little landmark on the way to writing the song that kind of gave us like a little boost to move further and further into the direction of a, of a song. Um, uh, Imani, I'm wondering, was it hard to write a poem where you said your mom was mad and grumpy sometimes? Were you, Can you repeat that one more time? Was it, was, it, was it hard to write a poem and put it out there to say that your mom is mad and grumpy sometimes? Or, mm, the, but that's what she was feeling right now. Got it. And you were saying she wasn't feeling so great. What, what I love is writers tell the truth. And they, you were reflecting where your mom was in the moment, and then this poem took it to a next journey. Well, speaking of taking to a next journey, we are now going to bring in our special guest artist. And I love that tonight we are going from uh, Haydn as an influence to Bethlehem, the vocationist Robertson as an influence. So I'm going to ask all of us to duck away and go on mute so that we can share the screen only with the fantastic 
Bethlehem Robertson, who's going to do her interpretation of the song Mother that is by Imani Ayala, Alea Dunlap, Oyin Moore Scott, and Ami Yaris. This is Bethlehem Robertson on the Tarima. Hello, everyone. This is my rendition of Mother. Na, 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 na. My God, my protector, my lover, soulmate, through thick and thin. Unbreakable bonds we create. They go by many names that you may know. Oh, mommy, mama, mama, Drake. Mommy, mama, 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 Drake. That's what I said. That's what I'm getting comments like huge applause this is wonderful Aye. uh amazing uh a, 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 an honor to have a professional like bethlehem perform and learn the song uh awesome all sorts of things so bethlehem i want to ask you unmute yourself um i want to ask you what moved you about the song we're talking a lot about how poems and music help us know ourselves and know the world and that's really yeah. the point of, of the humanities that, that, that really is helping to support all this. They help us know ourselves in the world. What did you see of yourself? How did this help you know the world and know these writers and mothers and working on it? So I thought it was really, really great that these young ladies chose to give homage to their mothers. I feel like mothers do a lot and they don't get um, their due credit for it. Um, and so I also feel like that um, feminine energy, even though it's not exclusive to women, because men have feminine energy as well, but I feel like the shift due to the pandemic, that there's a shift in the atmosphere that has transitioned to more feminine energy as opposed to masculine energy. I feel like masculine energy has been uh, like the ruling energy for a lot a lot of years. So now the shift is happening and I feel like feminine energy demands truth. Feminine energy invites you to sit down and feel and embrace your feelings and get to know them. Feminine energy um, is also nurturing and it's also healing. And so um, 
I give a shout out to all of my mothers everywhere, um, as well as the feminine energy that is um, in the majority in the atmosphere, I feel personally in today's time. So I thought it was just a great song, a great title, great lyrics, and yeah, it really spoke to me. Uh, and, and certainly you brought the energy. Um, <laughs> and I, I just wanna say Bethlehem is the empress of yes. You ask Bethlehem to join in something, she says yes. And in a way, this whole process has been yes. Poets saying yes to a songwriter who wants to transform their poetry. Poets saying yes to each other to say, yeah, we can give up some of our words for a whole. And speaking of feminine energy, I'd like to bring back all of these poets uh, to join us for one final chance of a conversation. Zena and Annabelle and Layla and Victoria and Imani and Alea and Oyin, come on back. Uh, you too, Ami. <laughs> but let's bring, I, it, you know, it's really quite something. You talk about feminine energy and these are powerful young women yes. who are, whose voices are the next voices. Mm -hmm. Well, actually they're the now voices mm -hmm. and then they're gonna be the next voices. Um, uh, Alea, I wanna throw a question to you because we were talking about this. It, it, and, and Bethlehem just referenced the pandemic and, and the feminine energy and how maybe that could be helpful now. But so we're in a tough time. We're in a tough time in the world with the pandemic. We're in the tough time in the world as we try to take on uh, structural racism and activate being anti-racist and speaking up for social justice. And you're a writer. And I, I wondered if there was a message that you could send to people during this challenging time what would it be? Um, so I'm really big on social injustice anyway. You gotta speak up a little so bit, it's hard I to hear you. Like, I feel like with the whole social injustice thing, people should like learn to realize that we were all born on the same planet. We were all born the same way. Nobody is different from anybody else from the inside we're all still people and everybody should be treated the same and i feel like the pandemic a lot of people being in their homes they were able to like see and realize the people that they had around them and what good things actually had instead of always like oh i want this i want that i want i want to read a comment in the chat that came to the panelists that ties into that, which is thank you all for sharing your talents. Everyone is amazing. I work with youth and I want all of you to remember your voices. Mm -hmm. We are in the middle of a major history making time. Your voices give me hope for the future. Stay positive, stay hopeful and keep going. Um, oh, we have a question and I, I'm gonna just read the question. Um, and somebody's going to take it. Uh, most writing is meant to be read. How does it feel to perform your work aloud for an audience? And do you wish to perform them again? How does it feel to perform your work aloud? And do you want to do it again? Who would like to answer that question? I can take that. OK, Victoria, go ahead. Um, yeah, I would say it feels really wonderful to um, have my work performed. I would agree that um, most things are written to be read. Um, and it makes me very happy to know that there are people out there who are hearing my words and our melodies. Um, and it's okay if you don't like them, but it just makes me happy that you're hearing them. Anybody else want to talk about it? What it was like to, to read your work? Would you like to read your work again or? Alea? Um, I like reading my work out loud to people because I feel like when you, when you write something, anybody can read it and they can take it any way they want. But when you speak it yourself with certain emphasis on words, more people understand what you're trying to say and they get the message because you speak so strongly about it when you actually say it. Uh, somebody just offered in response to that, uh, a song is poetry in flight, words with wings, up and away. 
So I think you, you by, by speaking your words, you let them take flight. I, we, we've just got a, a minute or two more, and I do want to offer the chance to any attendees, if you want to type a question either in the chat or the Q&A, um, we'd love to share it with these great writers. Um, you know, the, the, as you can tell, they're, they're not shy about offering their feelings. Uh, um, Val says, what surprised you when working on this project? Individually and working with each other, what surprised you? Who might want to take that? Annabelle, anything you might want to offer on that? What surprised you, either yourself or in, in getting to work alongside Zena? I have to say, nothing really surprised me except for the fact that my poem was actually being made into a song. And that was surprising. That wasn't something you expected. That um, was totally unexpected for me. Um, somebody else asked the question, um, what artists inspire you? Who can talk about an artist, whether it's a poet, a musician, a painter, an actor, a writer? Who's got an artist that inspires them, that they love, that they think about? Um, my favorite artist is Maya Angelou because um, in a lot of her poems, she was, she was, a lot of people attempted to silence her. And she continued to write about what she felt strongly about and it just makes her a powerful woman in general. Uh, Maya Angelou, excellent. Uh, Zena, how about you? You got an artist you love? Um, I was also going to say Maya Angelou. Um, a lot of her words that she uses in her poems are very touching and they send messages that, you know, they like really touch your heart. And she was mute for a couple of years when she was younger and she used writing like to express her feelings throughout words that she couldn't physically speak. And she couldn't like, she wasn't verbal. So she would use the words and creating poems to say what was on her mind. Excellent. How about you, uh, Imani? Is there, a, is there an artist that you love? A singer or a musician or a writer? An uh, artist that I like? Um, I would say, um, I don't really have a favorite artist. Yeah, I really don't. Oh, oh, artist, you, you mean, okay, um, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, that's it. Well, those are some to, to, those are some powerful woman energy coming at you uh, to, to quote Bethlehem. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for for one more uh, question, but I'm going to read a comment. It was very impressive to see and hear these young people express themselves so eloquently. I was blessed to see and hear this. I enjoyed this very much, and it was a spe special blessing to see my granddaughter Oyin participate along with her father. Oyin. I didn't know that was coming to you. I just started to read it. So I just want you to know, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but that is beautiful. Um, and another, another person said, such beautiful words and poetry and music and conversation. It was a joy to hear all of you. Thank you for sharing your feelings and ideas with all of us. People are saying, keep writing, keep performing. But somebody asked, what's next for y'all? So what's next? With, that could be anything. What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing next week? What do you want to write next? What do you want to create next? Layla, you have anything, uh, anything to share about what's next? Well, I like to write silly poems that rhyme. That's th th those are fantastic. You ever hear of a uh, of a guy named Ogden Nash? Look up Ogden Nash. He wrote silly poems that rhymed. Um, uh, how about um, how about you, Oyin? What's next? Um, 
actually, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to continue to work on um music as I have for a little while now, and probably keep up the poetry. Well, I think you ought to. Um. I think I'm going to wrap here and end with a comment from Darlene that just said, the young artists are the key to the future. Um, I want to offer a few thank yous. Um, first, I want to thank the Pennsylvania Humanities Council for helping to support this. Can't say enough about the importance of public money for the arts and government funding that then supports the arts in our communities we need it so much now. Um, and please, those of you listening, do everything you can to share what public money for the arts can make happen. Because we got to experience connection tonight that we never would have without the public's money saying the public should be heard. So thank you to Pennsylvania Humanities Council. I wanna thank the fantastic Mighty Writers team, Rachel Loper and Amy Perez, were so helpful in, in making all of this happen. And they were, they were uh, two other empresses of yes. They just jumped right onto this. And we just, I just love Mighty Writers and what they stand for. Uh, the World Cafe Live team and Ami Yaris and Bethlehem Robertson, unbelievable. Our Kids Count supporters that helped make our work with youth possible. And thank you all for coming tonight. You'll see down there a link if you go to liveconnections.org, that's what World Cafe Lives Education Programs used to be called till this year, backslash residency, backslash mighty songs, you'll get the link and we'll send that out to all the attendees. Blair will help us do that. And finally, I'd like to thank these fabulous, fabulous writers. Blair, can we bring it back so that we see the writers on the screen, please? And then we'll go back to that final slide. Let's have just a hand raise for Victoria Sinlinger. And for Annabelle Kuster, and Imani Ayala, Leila Butts, Alea Dunlap, Zina Ahmed, Oyin Moore, Moore Scott, thanks to our songwriting uh, seamster who wove all this together, Ami Yaris, and to uh, Bethlehem Robertson, our guest artist the powerful energy to bring it into the end on her tarima. Thank you so much. We're gonna leave that final slide up. We'll stay in in case anybody has any questions, but the artists don't need to stay. We can't wait to hear more from what you do. Thank you all for being here tonight. And as Victoria put it, thank you for sharing and how music and poetry offer us the opportunity to connect. Here's the Bye. connection in a disconnected world. Good night. <laughs>